You're like, forget Brad Pitt. Tell me about broccoli. Brad Pitt, who? <laughs> Bring on the broccoli. Hi, it's Jules. I am here with Robin. I am rocking my new plant-based point apron because today we are gonna geek out on some nutrition. This video is for you if you are looking for new, exciting, creative ways to incorporate plant-based foods into your diet, oil-free cooking tips, or again, if you just wanna geek out on some really amazing nutrition facts. So with that, I am gonna dive right in here with Robin, our nutrition ninja, as I like to call her. I don't know if she likes that though. She didn't ask, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> okay, so like Jewel said, there's gonna be some nutrition information in this chat. Um, and along the way, I hope you find out some really fun facts about some really common foods that you probably have in your house right now. Okay, so now we're gonna do some sort of just like fast facts. So Jules, question for you. What is the most popular vegetable in the United States? I am going to have to say without a shadow of a doubt, the potato. Potatoes win, but I'm pretty sure French fries are classified as a potato, which technically they do come from the potato. So it kind of worries me how many... <laughs> I mean, I agree. A good French fry is wonderful. I guess my, my sort of worry to that is, did people answer that question thinking French fries and not thinking vegetables? What is the most deficient nutrient in the United States? It's got to be fiber, right? So it's an awesome guess and it's up there, but the actual, the nutrient that people are the most deficient in is iron, um, which I always found really surprising just knowing if you looked at what is considered the standard American diet you would think that if an individual was eating meat and dairy and eggs that they would be hitting their nutritional goals for iron um, but unfortunately most people are not and it also highlights that it isn't a um vegan isolated concern. Another interesting fact is that in the United States, over 90% of people get eat more of the sodium that they need in a day. And in fact, they almost eat twice as much sodium as they should. So we're going to start with broccoli, which comes from Italy because I Googled it and broccoli is my favorite vegetable cooked or raw. It's hands down my favorite. Broccoli comes from Italy. Well, yeah, because I was thinking, oh, it's actually a cabbage. Really? Mm -hmm. I am learning so much today. <laughs> broccoli. Exactly. Exactly. Next time you cook, you make broccoli. Say, we're eating Italian tonight. <laughs> and this is going to sound, people are going to think I am such a loser. But it's sort of like, I will read the Wikipedia page about broccoli. <laughs> You're like, forget Brad Pitt. Tell me about broccoli. Brad Pitt, who? <laughs> Bring on the broccoli. That's not true, but whatever. He must be eating some broccoli, because let me tell you, I just watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he took his shirt off a lot, and I go- I didn't see that 57. one yet. He's 57. He looks fine. I bet you he's plant-based. He has I don't know it to be there true, but I mean- that that that, like, that that Adonis of a human being is putting anything but broccoli from Italy in that box. Right. <laughs> he imports it. <laughs> All right. So while you're sipping your imported wine and enjoying your bowl of steamed broccoli, know that you are getting 34 calories, 316 milligrams of potassium, three grams of protein. You're also getting vitamin A, C, calcium, B6, and magnesium. Hmm. So it's super duper good for you. Nutrient dense. The other fun thing about broccoli, like I just said, steam it boil it. You can roast it. You can eat it raw. It has a variety of uses. I feel like it's also a almost always accessible vegetable. This is a pretty standard staple in most grocery stores. You can toss it into a soup or a casserole or just, you know, steam it out of the bag, however you want to eat it. My sister clued me in on this just like a couple years ago. It never occurred to me to roast broccoli. I mean, we roast so many vegetables, but broccoli never occurred to me hot diggity dog. It is so good that way. And I like to get it in really small pieces and let yeah, it get a so little it's like a crunch. And we will talk a little bit more later about ways to cook and do roasting without oil, but you <laughs> certainly can skip the oil. Or even if you just use a little bit, if you're easing into it 
and easing maybe back into broccoli after a while. Ooh, so yeah. good. we ordered from Whole Foods like delivery and I put in the cart, you know, one head of broccoli and they brought us one floral. <laughs> And I actually, I like, I laughed so hard at it. I had Randy put his hand next to it so we could take a picture of it. So I could, cause I was like, um, I didn't spend, you know, $3 or whatever it was on this. It was. It That's was, probably I'm, the amount of broccoli in a standard American diet. You, I feel like we've been punked. <laughs> they, had, they had to like put effort in. Right. They had to pluck it off and put it in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> next food on my list of fun foods is cashews. I have had to buy the like packaged cashews. <laughs> Twins. So I just buy raw whole cashews, you know, or even like the pieces, if I'm just going to turn it into a sauce or something and I don't need them to be whole, it, it doesn't really make a difference. And Robin, um, you have really good luck. You use Thrive Market online for mm -hmm. bulk items, right? And you've said you get really good deals. Yes. You that's actually often you mentioned them. down there to Thrive Market. I think they usually have some cool specials going on. Yeah. That's actually awesome. You mentioned that. So last year when grocery stores were, you know, having a hard time keeping up with stocks of stuff and, you know, cashews included and the bulk section was closed, I actually signed up for a Thrive membership and I've been super happy with it. So uh, yeah, they sell a lot of stuff for, I think completely reasonable prices and a lot of goods like that. So I have filled up my pantry with like some dry beans, some sauces, some things like that, cashews as well. And they have a really great way of how they package tahini. So instead of it being in a jar, it's in like a pouch and you squeeze it. So it's like toothpaste, I guess, in a weird way. <laughs> That's gross. But it's a really easy way to keep it packaged and it's very minimal waste. And so I really like that. Same thing with their peanut butter. If you buy that cashews themselves are an amazing source of protein and magnesium and magnesium is really, really important because this is what encourages heart health. And for us who are interested in plant-based vegan eating, a lot of that comes back to wanting to keep ourselves healthy and definitely making sure our heart is healthy is number one on that list cashews as I know you guys have seen from some of our previous posts and we'll for sure link to it here can be turned into so many different things sauces cheese all sorts of stuff um, and they're also just a really nice snack they do fill you up so you won't you know be doing that mindless snacking later on in the day a handful of cashews can definitely fill you up for an afternoon snack they have zero waste. So if you are able to buy them in bulk and you can fill up your own container and you grab a handful, you, you your snack is mess-free, you're good to go. I actually was laughing, Robin, because I have a bag of cashews next to me <laughs> because I wanted to give a gift to a vegan friend here in town. I'm dropping off something for her tomorrow. She loaned me some uh, workout weights. And I was like, how am I gonna thank her? Flowers, wine raw cashews. I call them the vegan gold because you can turn them into so many things. So like you said, we'll link to some of our recipes. And it's funny that you talked about broccoli right before cashews, because my, that's one of my favorite combinations, either in a stir fry to add some raw cashews in there. And I always have broccoli in my stir fry, or I make a quesadilla where I do the cashew spread and we'll link that. I'll probably pop a little video up in here and some roasted broccoli in there. Just fold the tortilla over, toast it on both sides. It is so filling, so satisfying, so flavorful, so delicious. And it can be totally oil-free, whole food plant-based if you use a whole wheat tortilla or a sprouted tortilla and don't put any oil when you roast your broccoli. So one of my go-tos. I just had it yesterday. So a couple of times we've talked about uh, roasting vegetables. So let's talk about oil. The reason why some people who are plant-based or whole foods plant-based eliminate oil is just because of the um, health benefits to it. That oil is a big serving of fat and calories in a very small amount. And so if you're using just a tablespoon to saute all your vegetables or you're tossing it in your salad. Maybe you're doing like the oil and vinegar at the end of a salad, just one tablespoon and you're adding 14 grams of fat and 120 calories to your meal. And that may not seem like much, but it really is if you're already looking at a full day's worth and that's just one bowl of salad that you've already added this sort of heavy ingredient to. So sauteing vegetables, you can use water or you can use a little bit of vegetable broth and the amount is the same. So if you were going to saute your vegetables and you usually toss in a quarter cup 
a vegetable oil and let it warm up. Do the same thing, but with vegetable broth. And personally, I think it makes the vegetables taste better. The other concern about oil and its fat and um, calories is that it is linked to increased inflammation, which of course we don't want either. So if we start to look at things, maybe more start to finish like that broccoli quesadilla, it probably tasted great and you felt great afterwards. The fourth food item to talk about is brown rice. It has tons of fiber in it. It basically moves your waist. It will lower your cholesterol and so easy to incorporate in a day. Who doesn't love a bowl of warm rice with some vegetables on top of it or like a really good sauce or, you know, whatever you want to mix it up with. You had me at, it moves your bowels. <laughs> Sometimes it can be difficult to make rice. It's either really time consuming, like simmer for 50 minutes. I don't have 50 minutes. I forgot I was making dinner. <laughs> Not good. So I have an instant pot and that was sort of a, a splurge fun item that I really wanted to have in my kitchen because it saves so much time. I can cook that serving of brown rice in like 20 minutes now. I think mine was $100, but I've seen them for quite a bit less. And so we're going to jam pack the description of this video yeah. with all kinds of our, our favorite gadgets. We'll probably put some cookbooks there, some recipes. So definitely, definitely check out the description box. It's going to be a little treasure trove of stuff that we recommend. We both agree that if you really want to get into plant-based cooking and spend a little money, you don't have to spend money to do a great plant-based cooking. But if you want to, Vitamix blender would probably be my, besides a really great sharp knife, but that doesn't have to be that expensive, would be the Vitamix blender, especially if you love those creamy sauces, because you can soften and soak in warm water, either seeds or nuts and blend them up. <sighs> and I would encourage people, if they haven't tried brown rice or they think they don't like it, try the short grain, like the jasmine rice, and also try the longer grain, like a basmati brown rice. And you can usually find those pretty much anywhere. I know Trader Joe's has them. And they have very different flavors to me and like a whole different experience. So give them both a try before you rule out brown rice. Agreed. And let us know, did you like it? I was sitting at the dining room table tonight with my kids and my husband, and we sometimes quiz each other. What's your favorite vegetable? What's your favorite this and that? I asked them what they thought my favorite fruit was. And my son said sandwiches. So we, <laughs> That's we're getting there. That she should be given to me. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't think it is. So they ultimately guessed my favorite fruit, which is bananas. Bananas are a good source of potassium, which I found out 98% of people are actually deficient in potassium which is kind of shocking because I feel like most people would say, but I had a banana today. I probably hit my potassium goal. So we actually require quite a bit of potassium to keep ourselves in good health. 3,500 milligrams a day. That's the average that we need. One banana will give you 450 milligrams a day. So not a ton compared to the amount that you need, but have no fear. There are plenty of other places to get your potassium. Beans are a really good source of potassium. One cup of lima beans, 561 milligrams of potassium. So it's a pretty good chunk. So between maybe your soup that has beans in it, your banana when you woke up, you are already at a thousand milligrams of your potassium per day. So it's not like you need to sit there and think, shoot, I have to eat so much food to hit all of these numbers. Not the case. If the foods you're picking are nutrient dense and they check a ton of boxes, you're good. That's the best way to go. A serving of beans is half a cup. And that is a tiny amount. If you have a bean based meal, you'd be having a lot more than just Or even a cup. make it into like a bean dip and pair it with your celeries or carrots or whatever veggie you want to crunch on. And who knows what other, you know, I talked about the carrots and you're going to get you know, carbs and protein and your vitamin A, K, C, calcium, all these other things. But then if you're using a bean dip with that, you're getting your potassium and some fiber and all these other good things. I don't know if this is weird, but I actually like peanut butter on raw carrots. Peanut butter goes on celery. I think that's in, that's a rule. Hold on, let me, let me check my notes. At no place did I say.